Welcome back. Do not adjust your set. This is the colour this mission is supposed to be. Well, assuming it's this strange puce brown colour, it's the colour it's supposed to be. And it's because we're in a nebula. Wing Commander 3. <laughs> it's party time. Break and attack. Watch and learn, Colonel. Starting, as far as I'm aware, do let me know. And but if I'm wrong, the tradition of missions being a stupid colour because they're in a nebula, which was later taken to silly extremes by Free Space 2 and Tacky on the Fringe, about which I had better not say much more because if I get started on the topic of things I don't like about Free Space, I will never stop. So, on to the action, which thankfully I can see because this is not a particularly developed nebula. What's happening here, there's four Vactoths for fighter cover and they're protecting a destroyer and a transport. Maniac, after I released him, not that he would have waited very long if I hadn't, has gone for the destroyer and he'll be torpedoing that, which will take it out immediately. <laughs> right on cue, it's probably the first cooperative thing in the external game. And now he'll go after the transport while I dust some fighters. If you think back to Wing Commander 1, there was a conversation with Maniac and I think Bossman. Where they talk about strategies for going after capital ships, and in that, Maniac says that he'd go straight for the cap ships and deal with the escorts afterwards. And so it's probably good that that's what he does in this game when given a chance. Though it's not exactly great tactics, Maniac gets killed quite often at this point by the two Vactoths that go after him because he just ignores them and battles straight in at the destroyer and that can make the rest of the mission extremely hard. When you're dealing with four enemy fighters, you don't have time to concentrate on one of them, and flying straight to tail one will just get you killed. So you've got to constantly switch between them, wear each one down, takes forever. You'll see it in the... three systems time, I think it will be, when I won't have any option but to fly that way. Not quite sure what I'll do with that video, because it'll be very long. Anyway, and now I have a back to to finish off. Not particularly difficult, but requires a bit of an odd strategy. Some of the time I'll talk about it a bit more when we meet them at the next nav point. If we'd killed the fighters before the camp ships here, they'd have launched another wave, but that's never going to happen because Maniac will take out the destroyer straight away. <laughs> it's party time. Okay. Break and attack. Watch and learn, Colonel. I was going to call this the breather nav, but actually I don't think any of them are particularly harder than each other. This one doesn't have any replacement waves, I guess, which is why I think it's a bit easier. Anyway, the enemies here are dark, it's something the Thunderbolt is very good at dealing with. They're not usually like that. Missiles are not something the Thunderbolt does particularly. I guess the head-to-head -head missile's an easy one. The problem the Thunderbolt has in an arrow or a hellcat, you deal with a dark hit by getting on its tail at full afterburner, and if you launch a missile within about 1,500 distance units, the dark hit won't be able to evade and will therefore be destroyed. But the Thunderbolt is a good 400 kps slower than the arrow or afterburner, and 200 kps slower than even the hellcat. That has two effects. Firstly, it's much harder to get into that good firing position on the darkest tail. And secondly, even if you do, like here, where it's distracted, you're still not guaranteed to hit. The T-Bolt is perfectly capable of healing with the Dark Hit, but it can't really do it using missiles, you've got to use guns. But Thunderbolt's guns have so much firepower that you only need to hit with two good salvos, and the Dark Hit is dead. Like so. Why then I bother to try dealing with dark inducing missiles in the Thunderbolt? Well, anybody's guess. That just leaves the Corvette. My plan here was to try and take out the Tachyon turret, which didn't work, but it did do enough damage to the Corvette that it could be finished off quite easily. 
I thought I'd try and do that with the longbow's longbow with Thunderbolt's turret. If I was doing it with the longbow's turret, it might even have worked. That's because the longbow's turret has a particle cannon, whereas the Thunderbolt's is only a mass driver, so less range and less damage. But it didn't really matter because Maniac finished the Corvette off in the end. Watch and learn, Colonel. This is a replay of the first nav. It's exactly the same idea. There's a destroyer, a transport, and four Vatoths, and if we kill these four, then more will launch. The difference, as far as we're concerned, is that this time Maniac's not got a torpedo because he launched at the first destroyer. So I'll have to take the destroyer out. Before I do that though, I'm going to kill these fighters because I don't want a heavy fight on my 6 when I'm lining a torpedo up. This of course does mean that if Maniac kills his before I kill mine, we're going to have a slight problem, but provided I pay attention to the kill reports, everything should be fine. Or so I thought. Of course, what I neglected to consider was the fact that if a fighter is shot up by a turret, the pilot flying the ship that mounts that turret will not claim a kill. So, if you keep an eye on the radar, you will see that very shortly now the two red dots that mark the other pairs of Vatoths will disappear. Somewhat before I managed to finish off this one. There's a sort of trick to dealing with Vactoths, in as much as you want to encourage them to come about on head-to-head -head runs as much as possible, because the most vulnerable occasions are when they're turning towards you and when they're trying to turn away from you at the end of their run. And so to make them do that, you want to head away from them for a while until they reach about 3-4 thousand distance units at which point they'll come about and you can hit them. This lot were rather slow on the uptake when it came to realising that I was torpedoing their base, and then that happened. There's no two fewer back cloths than there were, and since I was dealing with the destroyer and maniac was dealing with the transport, we couldn't have possibly been the culprit, so I think they must have collided with each other. And in any case, that's the only way I can think of to do that much damage. I don't know why. The AI does occasionally collide with itself. I don't know what causes that. I guess they haven't got much collision avoidance. In any case, it does make this very easy because there's only two fighters left now and... They're never much of a threat in small numbers. I think I switch over to missiles to finish this guy off because I've got two of them left still and nothing really to do with them. No guarantee that they'd actually hit, but the back a rather easier thing to hit than a dark hit, so reasonably likely. One thing just to consider while we finish off this last enemy, had you forgotten we were flying in a nebula? I'm pretty certain that I had by this point when I was playing through it. Just after a while you get used to the colour and forget that it's not the colour it always is. Mission objectives accomplished. I don't really know why they bother with this nebula thing. I mean, I can kind of see the point in what Free Space and Tachyon did, as much as I hated it. That just seemed pointless. Not that it won't be back. Need clearance, TCF Victory. <laughs> hey, nothing like the sweet smell of success, eh, Colonel? Hey, maybe this time should get a new name, like, uh, the Deceptor or the Trickster. Maybe the Apple. I like the sound of that, the ambush. Well, you're clear to land, sir. The ambush, I think. If you consider the carrier's actual name, I think this is a facet of Roland's pessimism about the war as much as it is a commentary on the mission. Anyway, that does conclude things, so thanks for watching. I've been Ilanin, this has been Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger, and I'll see you next time when we're bravely running away. Good job, girl. Thank you, sir. Great mission. Thanks. Way to go, sir. Outstanding. <laughs>